Corey was thinking we were having a fun meeting. <laughs> oh, I know. Keep it for me. <laughs> we are starting the advisory team meeting for July 14th, 2021. It is 603 and we are in the Ignite building and we're going to put our recordings right here. Hello. Thomas, you take a stop there. Sprinklers on, and we looked out over the lake, and I do the same with the rain. So, kind of weird, but I enjoy just enjoying the rain. That's good. Thank you. Michael Holmes, cook. <laughs> <laughs> rain, and snow. Yeah, rain, sleet, or snow. I'm, I'm, I'm putting something on that smoke. <laughs> um, Sarah Kern, and listening to the rain on a tin roof. Our work has a tin roof. Our office. Yes. It's amazing. John Way Walker. I would rather be on the couch and just watch TV. And don't think for a minute and just watch TV, maybe something which doesn't make sense actually. <laughs> but normally, I walk around and pass around and enjoy it, but move things from one end to another. I feel energized somehow and yeah. Thomas Young. Um normally I'd probably be sitting down with their sports on the watches, but lately it's been trying to be more finding being educated and finding solutions to problems or understanding things. So okay. just, yeah, research. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. Okay. So first thing we're going to do tonight, and everybody has in your packet, you probably saw it um, sent earlier last week. This was uh, a summary of the work that you all did over the last two meetings. So in May, you came together and talked about different ideas, sort of brainstorm, and then in June, you finally got to be together uh, in this room, and we are walking around doing all the stuff on the sheets and the walls and um, looking at the summary of results, um, which is also in your packet. Um, and then you all kind of put your dots on and then came up with your highest priorities. And so hopefully everybody's had a chance to kind of review this document ahead of time. Um, this is something that will go to city council as uh, recommendations from this group. But we have time right now to definitely um, you know, we can kind of go over and see if anything was not did not accurately reflect what you all kind of said or what you wanted to say or, was, you know, it could be something that when I was reviewing the notes, it didn't accurately reflect what's on the paper. Um, we'll go through if there's anything to add or subtract. And then if anything in there is confusing or if we need to clarify anything, either for all of you or for anybody else who's reading it. Um, and we can also talk about if you feel this document is ready to go to council after those edits or not. Um, we do meet one more time on August 11th. 
So if you feel like this document still needs some work, you could come back to it August 11th and we could refine it again for going to council. The one thing that would be great is if we could go to council in August, uh, even after that August 11th meeting, because the council has um, a budget workshop the very end of August. Correct, okay? Right. August 30th. 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 So some of this, some of these recommendations have budgetary uh, concerns and um, you'll want the council to know about that. So, uh, raise your hand if you all want a couple minutes to yourself to review this or if you want to dive right in and talk about it. Who would like some time to review it by yourself? Raise your hand. Nobody. Everybody's good to go. Okay. Okay, good. So let's go with the first one, which is kind of the big one. Is there anything that doesn't accurately reflect? Is there anything in here that you're like, what? You know, what the heck? Well, why is that there? Or, you know, something like that. And I will write it down. We'll take it. Because we want to get this accurate before it goes to council. Um, Answer my question because I was going to ask. I thought this was a long term thing, so mm -hmm. pretty much answer my question. What do you think about that though? That change? I love it for the fact that my, I mean, everybody knows me and where I stand with, you know, creating some type of youth center for the kids in the community. So, I mean, I feel the faster we can get it going, I mean, because I don't want to rush into it and then it kind of fall and crumble like the last youth center did here in town because I want to be able to leave. It's about it's about leaving a legacy for these kids. So okay. You talk about the, the purchasing the play equipment. Can, 
since obviously I was gone last meeting, expand on that a little bit, what, what was talked about? <clears throat> Oh, yes, so, and, and um, how it's going to be run, because if I think it just went like that, it's so vague that yeah. the council would look at it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right, and Kay has spoken with our public works department, and they are willing to build the um, bins, mm -hmm. and like five feet by three or something, like three feet, and the first one will be rolled out um, at 1990, right? So we'll have one for 1990 uh, bin that's, and even people from the neighborhood might want to paint it. Um, you know, it could be something fun. It'll be painted, but then the kids or something can come paint. And there will be uh, free equipment that's purchased. And hopefully, it, like what you guys said, was maybe two to three could be in 2021. So we'll roll out the first one just because it'll be built. Um, 19 night is uh, when August, uh, it's the first Tuesday in August. Third. Do you know where that first yep. one's going? No, so if anyone didn't really identify that. Anyone have any ideas? Might as well the nature, the nature play park in Twin Bluff. You wouldn't even have to put a lot of stuff because like a lot of it mainly is like chalk and stuff that we're or me and another guy are putting in like every other week and stuff and is there a bin there right now at the nature player? No, nah, we usually just uh, kind of put it. We, we write a little note on the thing saying, well, after you're done, please put it back in the box and under the table. Okay. So. Hmm. What kind of things were we thinking about putting in there? It's up to you guys. Right? You know, one of the things I was going to do is that I see a lot of kids that are out and about at the parks, and they're, you know, a lot of them are sitting on their phone or kind of just hanging out. Um, but when somebody's got a basketball there, or a soccer ball, or tennis rackets, or whatever, kids are really likely to pick them up and, play and be active and interact with each other. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of on the idea of the, the little libraries, or the neighborhood pantries, or the, um, the Red Wing community. Auto mutual labor. Same kind of thing, but for kids, where they're like, okay, here's just some stuff that I'm out and about, and I kick a soccer ball around. Well, you know, like, I maybe you don't have one at home, or maybe I got dropped off and I didn't bring it, or I couldn't bring it because it's, you know. So the right like play equipment like that. Like and best to knowing that, that, knowing that, that a lot of it is. Court and yeah. the field. Right. Like the one behind our house has a baseball field and basketball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it does have the new pocket wiffle ball in it instead of baseball, maybe. <clears throat> so it does mm -hmm. So you think of trying to do that. something like. Um, like what they do at South Park in the wintertime with the skates, they have the box of skates and mm -hmm. stuff, mm -hmm. but you, we're trying to do it all, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, all right, I get it. Yeah. 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 You guys can and I mean, a lot of it's gonna walk away, it's just, you know, yeah. I mean, that's the nature of it, but yeah. Yeah. again, I guess it's just taking that a piece of sporting equipment and starts playing the sport, it's gonna be the worst thing. <laughs> and what we could do, what I could do is so that, you know, I can send out a list, mm -hmm. different things. You guys add to it, subtract to it, so that you can kind of have a say in it without figuring everything out. Would you like kind of like a neighborhood, a person from the neighborhood to kind of be watching to say, hey, the wiffle ball's gone, did somebody stop by everyone? You know, all that kind of stuff, where there'd be like a point person that could be checking kind of the inventory in it. Maybe. City involvement in the school district's flight pass program. 
I'm sitting there, I mean, I'm reading it where it says city does not participate in this program, does, yada, yada, does, yada, yada. Does participate. Oh, does participate. Mm -hmm. So, but make it bigger. Wouldn't it kind of be the same as like creating this lift up leaders program in a way? Well, because we're, we're trying to get the community more involved. Oh, mm -hmm. oh. So, uh, clarify, or someone else can clarify if I am wrong. This, the flight pass program, would be something specific for high school students who are looking to get into programs, whether it's PR and marketing, or engineering, or electrician, mechanical, whatever, into all different kinds of, play, you know, departments in the city, and it's like an internship kind of thing. Well, aren't they doing that already, though? Yeah, but everybody could do it. They're looking for more opportunities. You know, the city does some, but I think we're probably four or five. But you know, we have 10 or 15. What's the demand? Sorry. What is the demand when it comes to the youth wanting to be involved in city politics? Does anybody know? Well, I don't know if it's politics or, or how are, are in the city, the everyday doings of, uh, of the city of Red Wing. Well, I just know the city or the school has said, hey, we'd like to, and they're having trouble getting kids right now after COVID to want to participate in internships. So I think that's also going to be something for the school that maybe the city can help promote also. Um, but it's more just trying to get them, at least my understanding of it when I've, when I've talked with the district is that um, it is to try to get kids to see, oh yeah, this is what it's like to be on a CAD and coding or, you know, like the internet. This is what it's like to, um, I've had someone shadow me, um, you know, I'm just trying to think of all the jobs. Like working in public works and that. Yeah, public yeah. works, uh, a chemistry on the yeah. wastewater yeah. campus. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of variety of things that the city does, mm -hmm. and it's just getting the kids' interest and, and mm -hmm. letting yeah. them know what, what, is what the option is. Mm -hmm. Right. But hey, I can maybe go into that, or if there's something like, uh, you know, greenskeeping or something, mm -hmm. you know. Right. You know, they can go and uh, shadow the parks and rec guys. And, and I know the city has a, has a want to mentor um, kids. So I, that is what, is that what you, so anyway, that was what I heard when we were talking about flight paths. And then the lift up leaders was more for people in the community, mm -hmm. just adults, um, or in young adults or seniors or whoever, especially from diverse backgrounds, to, you know, uh, do something. At least that's what Northfield's program was, Northfield's mm -hmm. Emerging Leaders program, so that people feel more comfortable. And maybe that is mentoring with somebody. Can you know, we also kind of talk um, on this one that like that, that it would be like encouraging maybe somebody wanted to share on a conference to see what it's like to run a small business mm -hmm. and that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. So could the city work with to help promote that type of thing and, and make those partnerships. I think we could probably work with the school. The school is going to do the brunt of the um, promotion, but I think as a city, we could say, hey, we're a big proponent. We are mentoring a lot of kids. Hey, are you a business? Could you do, you know, I mean, I think there are some ways that the city could maybe could the be an example. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I know that they're reaching out and they're working. Um, and so this is sort of what can the city control? Well, we could maybe be Oh, um, an example of, a, of, a, of an entity or company that's trying to do. Would there be any way that the students could be involved without being in a mixed program itself? Because that's a specific program they sign up for. Mm -hmm. So would this be in addition to that? Or would no, you this would be, be the Blank Paths program. Okay, mm -hmm. so you need to do Which I have talked to the school and they've said, hey, we don't want it to be like that. Mixed program, they're thinking you know, this is a whole K through 12 thing that they're like baking into their system, okay. and so they want it to be the flight paths program, and we would be just an avenue. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, I don't want this, and if you don't want it in here, I just you know, if there any clarifications on that. And we can we can ask one more time after we go through uh, the work that we're going to do tonight. Maybe, you know, last five minutes we can say, okay, based on the work we did tonight, is there anything else you want to add to this? You know, or take away. Okay. Okay. So, last chance for right now. Any other comments on the Sam? Um, I have, I know it's not highlighted, so it's probably not something.
something super important that we need to like dive into depth with, but for the Create a Neighborhood Grant Program, I had to ask a few questions about just more specific stuff. I think last time we looked at like how are we going to <coughs> how will picking a neighborhood for that grant work? Which neighborhood gets the grant and why? How often are these grants given? And all of that. So that one doesn't specify, you know, there's yeah. no, and later on in this meeting, we actually are going to be talking about that. So, okay. you know, about with some more meat on the bones on that one. Okay. About what we kind of currently do well or not so well, and then like what could happen. So, do you want to put, just let's put that hold for just a yep. second. And then we'll, okay. Yeah, but that's a really good, that's a really good question. Okay. Let's um let's move this over. Okay, so our second, we've got kind of two big sections tonight that we want to go through. And the first one is discussion of city support and policies related to community events. There was a lot that this group talked about, a sense of belonging, a sense of welcomeness around events. What does that mean? And you know, people talked about not their kids don't really want to go to some of the events and, and that kind of stuff. And there was some good conversation last time. So, what we want to talk about it. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm already speaking to that. Yeah. Okay, so what I'd like to know is what, because I. What does getting involved, what does getting involved with city government mean to you? Okay. Different activities, 
So it's not been something that's been based on a policy. It's just been sort of something where on a given year they might put 10000 into it, and if somebody comes forward and asks for it, then we'll go through a grant process. So I'd say it's sort of um, ill-formed. It could use a little bit more structure. Um, in addition to that, uh, I think for the last maybe 10, 15 years, the council has had a fund that they call Strengthening Neighborhoods. So every council member has up to $650 that they can grant out to support neighborhoods or community. So it could be something where, um, like uh, when the Hispanic Outreach does their um, festival, council members will say, I'll give $100 of my funds to support that event. Or it could be a neighborhood comes forward and says, hey, I want to have a neighborhood party. Could you provide some support? So it, it looks like different things. Um, but that's available for each council member to decide, and the mayor to decide how they want to spend that money. There's also um, uh, 1990, that's something that the city supports by hopefully providing uh, resources through the police department to different neighborhoods who want to be organized. That's been very successful. We've had, I think, up to 30 neighborhoods who participated in that. And then, um, you know, for other large community events, uh, we ask people to go through a process we call a PUP. So that's a private use of public property. So if I go down to Cobble and I say, hey, I want to use this large area of the park, we then say, okay, go through a PUP process. And if there's any support that the city has to provide, we track that and we charge that back to that group. Occasionally, if it's a nonprofit group, the council will say, we will waive a portion of that cost. So they may say, you know, your cost will be $1,000, but we'll pay up to $500 towards an event. So, and that's also not really well structured. It's based on, um, the, the PUP process is structured, but it's based on a nonprofit or, or somebody coming forward asking for a waiver of those fees. So those are kind of the big categories. Um, you know, there's other kind of smaller things that the council will do. Um, you know, they, they support the fishing tournament that comes, and that's not every year, but um, a lot of years we get a fishing tournament, and it supports the local economy, so the council will put $5,000 towards that. Um, in the past, the council has supported the um, uh, Miss Red Wing uh, contest, and uh, provided some support to that, because they see that as a community value. So it, it's kind of been, a real broad. Um, <coughs> so the I, you know, the idea I think you guys are all talking about. So thanks, Kate. In case you have any questions, so that's really good. Um, so we can ask her anytime. Um, so the group was talking last time about. I mean, it happened to be about River City Days. It could be about any event, and how this group could, you know, make recommendations because this, the, you know, the. Council provides at least for River City Days, and a lot of that's in kind. But that is fifteen thousand worth. I think the holiday stroll I looked today, and it was a, it was less, like three thousand, two thousand. But you know, in the case that there are grants that people ask for when they need something, so this group might want to think about, or if you, you know, um, how how might you recommend that the city would look at the funding that it gives. And what would you want that funding to go toward? Um, there are cities that, you know, almost like if you're going to fill out a grant for a philanthropic organization, you have to meet certain guidelines in order to get that money. So, you know, it is, it is something to think about. You know, what are some funding guidelines to encourage slash possibly require some more diversity and inclusion in the events, the booths, the planning, the um, activities that happen in that space. You know what I mean? Right now, River City Days and other people say, can we have this money? The city generally says yes. Go and decide what it is. Now, I'm not saying that this group would decide for everybody what that is, but there are questions you could potentially ask. What are some things that you're doing for, you know, to make it more inclusive? Do you have people, you know, to, to kind of open up your planning process? So I'm wondering, do people, you know, this is one way to look at, if you're looking at what is a policy that the city can have some control over, because the city does not necessarily plan River City Days. 
but they do provide quite a bit of funding for River City Days. So how can we encourage people to do those diverse or inclusive programming that you all were talking about? Honestly, I see diversity and inclusion, but I just see nothing that involves like an African American festival or something that involves people of color. I would like to see something like that because I mean, we nothing got done for Martin Luther King, nothing got done for Black History Month. I mean. That, you know. mm -hmm. It's in the recommendations, so would you want to put a number on that recommendation? I don't, I don't know. You know, do you want to ask the city? They, you know, our city funds other things. So Michelle, I'm hearing that the city is super hands off on all of these things. Like they're contributing a little bit of money, but someone else is responsible for getting it done. And so would the recommendation be that the city takes precedence of hosting this, of the planning of the hosting, that this is their no, thing? No, I think they wouldn't be able to take that on. Okay. Right? But, you, but you could say that someone has to meet certain guidelines in order to get that funding. Mm -hmm. Right? Because we're not asking, okay, right? I mean, we wouldn't be able to take on, I mean, the chamber, like, does River City Days, thank goodness. Because um, the recommendation here does say create an African American heritage event and cultural heritage event. The oh. recommendation is saying create this. For that particular one, I'm sorry. Yes. I thought you meant that we want to take over other no. people's. I was no. Like, oh, no. Sorry. No, that these are things that other people are doing. Are we saying that this is something that we're asking the city create this event? Good question. Who would do it? Yeah. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Is it preferable to have a new I don't, yeah, both, because honestly, I don't see nothing for, in a celebratory way for people of color. Like, if we, I mean, I have nothing against none of these, not none of them, but it'd be nice to, you know, like a Juneteenth celebration or, you know, MLK. I mean, just something that includes, we're talking about diversity and inclusion. I think we should be about it. Inclusion could be part of River City Days where you add certain events to to that. But I think what you're saying, Mike, is a special day set aside, kind of like the Hispanic, um, what is it, Hispanic heritage, mm -hmm. like something separate that celebrates people of color. And is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. You want not just the inclusion, but also a day. I mean, yeah. I mean it's more than just a day. I, I get what you're saying. It's more than just a well, day to me, though. That's what I'm saying. That's why I said both for the yeah, for sure. add things to River City Day, because that's going to be more inclusive to every, everyone. speaking for everybody when it yeah, comes yeah. to that. So it's mm -hmm. like everybody has their own opinions. I'm just basically speaking for myself. You can speak for me. <laughs> yeah, when I do that, I'm sort of like, you know, I'll say what I think I heard, and you guys can all kind of say yes, no, or I don't agree, or Joe, what are you thinking? Uh, I think, I, and I'm trying to follow what he's saying. I think what he's saying is among all those special days, and to him, or to people 
of color, could we pick a day which we can enhance? Because all these things are there, but they're just down low. And, you know, today is a holiday, it's a tin day, whatever it is, and just it's quiet. So I think he's trying to say, can we pick, can we maybe have like a day in Red Wing we can celebrate like MLA? M- 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 LK day and just enhance it and have something on that day. It, it, that's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Or, 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 or June 10th. And we exactly. pick that day to say what would Red Wing do for this? And maybe it will be something to set up like Hispanic Outreach, so some kind of a board or a group which will, will superhead this but with, with a backup from the city. Is that yes, what, what we're saying? Who, do, who sets up the Hispanic heritage? Uh, that's what I was actually. Hispanic Hispanic Hispanic. Hispanic. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so does it mean uh, the black people? We set up something like that, and we we can organize something like that, and we can get back up, and we can do that. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask you, Michael. You know, and could we do something like that? Because uh, of course we don't want to sit down and make. I hate to say white people or color people, you know what I'm saying, but because I'm kind of there, but we're not saying we're going to just sit in the back and let you guys decide what we want to do. I think if Michael is talking about that, I think Michael is able to stand up to say, hey, let's do this, she will join, she will join, you know what I mean, and we'll stand up, and with the backup, I think we can be lifted up and do this thing. I think we can do it. I think there's a few minorities around here, different whatever you call it, but I think people come from different angles and be able to s- head this with backup mm-hmm. from the city maybe for a start. Mm-hmm. Is, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Michael. Yes, ma'am. And, and back to the River City days, I'm going to just talk while I have a second. Those booths we do, people have to pay a little bit, have to have to have, uh, you know, what you're going to take over there. So there is child where she wants to do something uh, for Africans, you know, she wants to have that reggae music and their arts and stuff like that. But child has to go work in Red Wing and get $10 an hour. She doesn't have the means of getting the booth and the support. The thing I have found in here, nothing in Red Wing qualifies people of color, including housing. All these programs they have about get this, this, if you're a person of color because you are there, there's a certain people who can qualify in these brackets. So we are looking for an opening, I think, where the qualifications can be a little bit more lenient. If I have $10 in my account, back me up because I want to do this. Mm-hmm. You see? Mm-hmm. It, it, could could this, this creation of this group mm-hmm. then use some of these funds from the cities to Write a grant to pay for the booths for people. For some of this, I had somebody call me today actually about River City Days. Mm -hmm. They want to make some, they want to do something, and I'm like, I was just like, I'm not sure you gotta go, you you know. I think people would want to do these things, but if I gotta feed three kids and I'm a single mother, I want to participate in this thing, but I, I have a decision to make. Should I go to Audis and buy? Letters for my kids, or should I go to River City Days to make an extra penny? So, you see, that's where a lot of people find themselves, where they have little, but to, to, to be able to get that booth with not sure what's going to happen. You're in Red Wing. Who's going to visit my booth? Am I going to make any money? If I'm gonna, what's going to happen? Am I going to just dump my $50 in it and my kids are going to be hungry in it? So there's a lot of underlying questions where people are not just like feel supported that they can do this. So you're right. saying if people, if they didn't have to purchase that booth, let's say, and take yeah. away some of those barriers. Yeah, maybe for a start. Be- maybe for a start or maybe the, the city can meet up, meet them somewhere bring in a little percentage of it and the city backs up a little bit of, you know what I'm saying? You know, and, and yeah. for a start, and maybe people will be encouraged to say, <laughs> let me try this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So whether that's like, a, you're saying like businesses, um, like even... You know, businesses, soul food, you know, yeah. Yeah. set up music, you know, something different, something different, you know, something different where my kids want to be there. I want to walk two booths, but my kids want to leave right away after the three and three basketball, you know. And I have to pay handsomely for that, by the way, for my kid to play there. Mm-hmm. My ki- I want my kid to play. What if I don't have money? 
we have to pay to join all those things. Mm -hmm. I have two kids, I have to pay for this kid and this kid. If I'm a parent who cannot afford to do that, my kids are not playing in, in that three and three. Just little examples which people overlook and we think it's very easy to do. If I go around and find kids who want to participate in that, their parents don't have money to pay for them or to buy the T-shirt and decorate it with no sense so that afterwards they can throw it away. Right. You see? Yes. Yeah. I'm just saying. No, yeah. It's a lot. It's just a lot to go yeah. through. So a little push maybe. There could be something like, oh, you can apply maybe you know, for $20, you know, people might do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you feel like that people who know other people or for you, if you have a business or you would want something, do you think having that removed? Some of those financial... Assisted, probably. To, yeah, and that's one little piece of the whole big pie, but mm -hmm. it's a big thing. So, Joey, you're saying something like city incentives or something, the city could put in funds so that other people could have booths and things like that. Mm -hmm. Free of charge or for a lot of us, you know, a lot less money. Yeah. Maybe they can have categor categories. The city can say, if you're going to do culture, ah, we're going to give you 50%. Do we know what a booth costs in our city? I don't know. I'm asking Laura right now. And I don't know. So I don't know either. I'm asking Laura Dollar right now what a booth okay. costs. Yeah. Okay. That would be good to know. Yeah. She's getting way too specific. <laughs> Is she answering you? <laughs> she is, but she wants to know what's for sale. Uh -huh. it, well, see, there we go. That's, that's kind of the other yeah. I mean, that's what we got. thing. Mm. I just told her I just told her merchandise. An individual selling goods. How much is it? Right. Just so we could, because like I'm saying, if we could, if if this group created could write a grant, if how many people they could support it, something like that, you know. So, but she might be getting too technical. Right? But, yeah. but I guess this group wouldn't have to write. No, I would say I say I should say this group who creates this heritage. Event in cultural <laughs> But it's something where the city could potentially say something like the city gives money and it's going to give and some of its money is going to be able to open up to other people who could have more moves that wouldn't normally. You know what I mean? And really kind of look at the system of how they build that. Yeah, because typically when you write a grant, you can write for multiple reasons of what you're going to spend the money on. So that could be part of, you know, maybe maybe a group is formed to do um, you know, like Michael was saying, and then they get a grant uh -huh. from the city uh -huh. to do some of these things, and they could have a plethora of things that they're sponsoring through that one grant, not just. Um, and could it be indirect even more? Only a premium. You know, if policy was um, for the city to give a grant to whatever organization, you know, they you know, request 10% of the booths be made available at, uh -huh. at income. You know, level. Uh, there's some way to say so. It really doesn't. The city's not responsible, but mm -hmm. they're giving preference to organizations that will will say, "Yep, we're going to have 10 percent of these are for income levels or people of color, mm -hmm. or we're going to do some, you know, some things where maybe it puts it on those organizations so it's top of mind for all of them too." <clears throat> so the insurance you were talking about, okay, is like. So like River City Bay, the insurance be covered if somebody fell against a booth that Cholwe had in Chipper Tooth. Right. Cholwe's not responsible. Right. Oh, okay. So are you saying, Corey, something like you can give options for if you get this five thousand from the city, you still have to plan your event, right? We're not gonna tell you how to plan your event, but you have to then you have to say how you're going to and maybe that is a list or maybe of options. Like, it, like, like, that. like for the chamber, just say, for example. So they're going to have, you know, the city's giving 15,000 in-kind donations to the event. They're going to sell 100 booths. Maybe there's 10 booths that are, in addition, now that are a subsidized booth or something that, you know, they still get the money. It doesn't really cost them anything to have an extra 10 um, or whatever. But at least it's a way to, to be like, yep, we're going to, yeah. Okay, it's $140 for me. $140, <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can't, you can't combine homemade or pre-made unless they're at levy. That's the only question. <laughs> okay, so. That's the art district over there on River City Days. <laughs> because oh, yeah. then you got the beer tent and all that. All basically, majority of the food is over by... Um, 
over by the teepee yeah. in that area. So do people feel like other events when you think about Big Turn or Holiday Stroll or the Arts Festival? Do you like there's or there's a big turn? Turn? Mm -hmm. who, who Who's in charge of the Big Turn? Um, Sam Brown. Brown. Well, technically, I think if you're going to get something from me, my kids, I have a say in what you're going to do somehow. So maybe they could ask for what you're going to do, and you can have, write up something little, this is what I'm going to do, and whatever doesn't get, it, get them in trouble, they can take, and whatever gets them in trouble, they say, ah, now can we talk about this and, until, until we get to where it's comfortable for, for both. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a boost, so it should not maybe maybe it should not be free again. You know, um, it's, it's it's supposed to be a boost. Like what I was thinking, a little boost. And I have little, but I want to be there, but I can get there, and they can gap up that. What do you feel about the the food, Good. music, the arts? I don't know if you guys kind of just. Say I really think well, they I should have know. better music. I, I, okay, they have better music. Me and my husband can jive because we are at that age. I think Michael and everybody else who deals with with this is. Have you been over there of late? There's a certain age which is missing. Okay, Where are our river. kids? At the River City. Is that, are we talking about the River City? Or any, any event really? Yeah. yeah. Well, at the River City, I've been there during the day. I feel like there's an age missing. It's like a seventh day change. Well, of course, I go there. You know, there's uh, little kids because they have to be with their parents. And these are the fun age. They're not there because there's nothing to entertain them. Food and, uh, and beer, mm -hmm. you're not allowing them to drink. So they're not there. And then order... Again, you see, so there's a missing edge in there. So we have to, and, and that's the future Red Wing. If we want to continue this River City days and make it good, <coughs> apart from just the, the, we're talking about diversity inclusive, but I think even the age, the, the children you work with, that age should be somehow included in there. They, they are our future. That's why we are sitting here. If we're all this age are going to die tomorrow, we wouldn't be here, but we are doing this to better tomorrow. And to better tomorrow is the children who are missing in all these places. I have seen a few ones at the holiday straw. I love that. I love it. Because I'm from a big city where that didn't happen. So I, I'm not there. I haven't seen, you know, I'm just there like, oh, this is pretty. It reminds me of a movie from an old back. But, but River City days, we got to find inviting things for uh, children as well, and when I say children, there's an age. You all know which age is not there. Yeah. You know, it's, it, whether it's music, whether it's um, horseback riding, I don't know, something, yeah. something they can also find themselves. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. So if we, so okay, you've kind of been. <laughs> Do you see that there is a place? for some policy work. You know, you said that it's been a little, um, it kind of ebbs and flows and we don't really have a specific thing. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about some possibilities that you see might be able to happen? Because um, you see the council look at a lot of things. So mm -hmm. what do you, when you hear this conversation, what do you think about? Well, I think two things. One is the chamber would love to have new events, but they don't have the capacity to organize them. So if we were to say, there's a group here with funding would bring in different entertainment and target maybe at that younger crowd, but that they would take responsibility for kind of bringing it in. I think the chamber would be willing to sign like the paperwork, you know, the official contract, but they don't have the ability to kind of do that. Plus, I'm not sure that they're the experts in bringing in some of these other groups, just like we aren't. 
So if the, if the chamber can kind of take the legal part of it and the city can take the funding part, then we need somebody who's just willing to help us identify or bring in groups. So I think it could be a real win-win-win. Uh -huh. And you know, the one year isn't gonna do it. We're gonna have to create a tradition Continuancy. of having- Continuancy. Yeah, one of the best River City days I ever went to is when they had uh, sort of a mini powwow there. And it was really, really good. They set up a teepee, they had um, cultural tours of the food dancers. Yeah, the food dancers. It was great because it was different, it was fun, and it was part of us. You know, it was part of our culture that I don't know enough about. So really, it, it could be almost, you know, I'm hearing it's sort of like the city would be willing, because we do, the city does provide funding already, right? And it sounds like, because you've had a conversation with the chamber, I guess that other people are also willing to kind of take some ideas and incorporate them. But there might need to be a, a group, and maybe it's this group, or a group that is some people from here. I mean, I don't know what that group is, but that the city would say, we will help with providing some say into that and then use that funding to do something. Do you know what I mean? Because a lot of times it's the funding that gets in the way. But the city has some. Yeah, and another example of how this sort of started organically was years ago when the diversity festival was going on, I think there were, I think the um, Human Rights Commission did it for a while, but I also think PFLAG did it. And they, they don't have an official organization, as far as I know, or if they do, it's kind of defunct now. But they just said it's the right thing to do, so we'll go out. I think they sold chairs one year, Adirondack chairs, and they did all sorts of creative things, and then the city sort of matched that money, and they brought in or scheduled the entertainment. So it doesn't have to be overly structured, mm -hmm. but it just has to be somebody with some good ideas, and I, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that the council would say, we're all over that. We can't do the, the legwork on it, but we can help by providing some funding. Okay. So it sounds like this group is interested in a having the council know that this group wants to have one specific new, <clears throat> at least one new event celebrating the local university and all of that, and then also finding ways to really target some of this money that already goes to events to make sure that that's more diverse. Right? And easier accessible. So say more about that. What, what do you, when you say well, that, like, what it totally mean? saying about how difficult it would be for mm -hmm. her to get a booth if she's mm -hmm. a single parent. Okay. And yeah. um, so I think adding that would be. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. So we can go back and possibly um, frame up some potential specific policies and maybe come back at the you know, August 11th because it would be really good for this group to weigh in before the August 30th budget meeting. Um, do we have anybody in this group who is willing to, I mean, when we have that set of recommendations that we already talked about a little bit at the beginning of this, that list that you have with the highlights and stuff. Do we have one or two people from this group who are willing to get up in front of council and, and um, present recommendations from this group? Or just mull that over. I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand now. But just think about that. Because there are multiple ways we, you know, we, it could happen. It would be best if one or two people from this team would present to the council. If nobody wants to do that, we can do that just in a report format, and some care myself can can do that. But it, you know, you probably all seen council meetings, and it's nice when somebody can actually a face to the or faces to the group. So I'm just we're not going to ask, but throughout this meeting, just kind of contemplate. Who did? Oh wait, that's not catch yourself. Okay. Yes, you are. Very tough. Oh my gosh. Okay, it is. Okay, it is um, there's another thing that we just, before we leave events, and then we're going to get into sort of increasing involvement with city government, but there is, um, we do have some other ways that the city does have events, and we do not, we are not going to go into huge detail, but there are four. You know, at least four that when I think of things, 
when you think of the Shaolin. And we're not going to get into tons of detail. If you want to, we can have these folks come to a meeting. The library, the pool, and the park naturalist program. So these all have events. And I just wonder from your perspective, um, again, we're not going to be able to solve everything today, but these are three things that the city actually does have more control over. You know, these are underneath the city um, umbrella. Do you feel like one of these is uh, more, I just, I wonder, like when you think of the shelter, is this something that you feel like you're able to go to, that your friends and family, the library, the pool, which one of these feels the most accessible to you? Library. Or none? Or accessible to like me personally? Yeah, things that you think, oh yeah, I go there, my there cool classes there, my kids like to go to something there. I Park naturalist. Park naturalist. The free ones. Right, but do you go to any of these, Sam? Like, do you feel like those aren't places you would like to go? Or the library. Okay. Not as a reason. Okay. I don't Shelton know. Sheldon had some cool, like, just sort of jam session things they were doing on the stage a couple years ago. Okay, okay. That was fun where they were just mm -hmm. informal and I don't know if they were free. They did a couple during COVID that I think they were free. Right. Well, I feel like they were kind of hosted by a uh, group. Yeah. You know, like some groups would say, hey, we'll pay for the group and then it's open to the public. Yeah, and they just had people who mill around on stage. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, that was kind of cool. I mean, that's a neat way to get young performers and stuff too. I mean, they did that upstairs thing too, which I never really worked, so I never got there. Yeah, I think they are trying to be more accessible. But I just wanted to do the, the Sheldon used to do the Battle of the Bands or something like that. That sounds fun. Didn't they? I'm not sure. I could be wrong. I like But you know, these are four things that are there for kids, they're there for families. And so I just wondered when everyone was kind of bringing up events. These are Didn't they more. show some movies there for a while to show them too? Yeah, so yeah. Nights, mm -hmm. yeah. family nights, yeah. And like Friday scary ones they did for a while, like an actual yeah. army and yeah. they have themes and stuff like that. So movies. Yeah. <coughs> Michelle or Kay, you might know about this. So at the pool, they offer the low income passes for $10, but I heard that there was a cutoff date that you had to get that by. You could buy passes all year round at the full price, but the $10 passes, there was a cutoff date. And we found that community members saw that as a barrier of like, oh my gosh, I didn't get down there in time. And now my pass costs 165 for my family instead of 30. Okay. Um, and so, so not having, yeah, not having that cutoff date that yeah, a family can decide any time. They have to have the free reduced letter. Oh. And if they don't have the letter, and it's very, very difficult. Like, it's very difficult for people to try and help a youth get it whose parent isn't able to get it because they don't have that letter. And there's no, I went round and round with, um, he's a great guy, but like, so he just can't. I mean, he cannot do it through the, the stipulations that he has to say that this child is on it to be able to get that. Oh, that's so right. Yeah. So, so without the letter, letter, you can't oh. get it. And that, that, that's a huge barrier for a lot of the kids because the family doesn't have a letter. Or the parent isn't, the parent for one reason or another isn't, another isn't another able to go down with the child with the letter. And so if like, I wanted to go with somebody, I can't without the letter. And that kind of update is always a couple weeks before school gets out, so people aren't really thinking about the pool. Yeah. And it's not advertised super well either that that kind of update is when it. <clears throat> so that could be that could use a little bit of work. What is the so for the three reduced lunch letter? That's all you need. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, don't know if there's more, but that's one maybe. It's a fantastic thing. Like, it's so wonderful that the family. I thought it was five. Oh, maybe it's five. I, it was always five when I was working with it. I only hear about it in meetings. I've never actually done it myself. So. <laughs> but it was five. Okay. Do we, 
Or is that a possibility too to have something like that with the Sheldon? More same kind of. A, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I know they have a lot of free kids play free events and stuff, but um, I mean, it's sad that there are ever open seats, and I don't know if they would ever do like rush seating. Mm -hmm. It's like I just <laughs> I don't think there should ever be an empty seat in that building because. And if they would get more like New York or Chicago, where is it? Well, they're at least cheap, so you can, you might get in, you might not, but at least. Well, and being in the rush line is fun itself. Well, and performers <laughs> like to have yeah. people in the audience, so it's like, yeah. it doesn't matter if they're paying or not, it's like, it's nice mm -hmm. to have it used. And I know that they donate to families throughout the year, and so just making it advertise of, how do you get access to them? Like, I know that they have a, a donation process, and so maybe making that more publicized. The is that basement, or is the lower level of the clubhouse still pretty bare? Yeah. Because I was there, I worked there a few years back, and they were just, I mean, it was, it, it's literally almost, probably about the, almost the size of this area. It's got a bar, you know, a bar set up, everything. I agree with that. That place wasn't being utilized. Mm -hmm. Then, I can only imagine now, because from what I hear, they're pretty in the, in the black. One of the ideas was to have a, um, kind of like we talked about with the neighborhood boxes, but to have free um, snowshoes or cross-country skis so people could come in and just check it out for a couple hours and go on the trails and then come back and um, you know, maybe have hot chocolate or almost like a skating rink or a warming house, but not for ice. The Visit Red Wing does the booklet of all the activities and places, the hotels, restaurants, everything. It would be nice to have something similar of all of these resources and how to get them at discounted prices. Like, I've learned so much just sitting here, and I am in, in, in this. <laughs> like, um, so having a place that people could grab a flyer or brochure that just says, if you meet these qualifications, you, this is how you get free tickets to the Sheldon. This is how you get discount tickets to the pool. It would be nice to see what I'm going to know that there's like a threshold. There's a lot of people who barely yeah, don't meet see. that threshold mm -hmm. that could really benefit from some things too. So thinking of like some sort of step thing, because there's a ton of people who are like just getting by, mm -hmm. but can't do it. So anything oh, at all. That is. <laughs> that was going to be the unpopular, probably, opinion when we were talking about the pool qualifications for the reduced fee or whatever. What if you don't qualify for free or reduced food. lunch and you spent all school years spending your last dollars on your kids' lunches and then yeah. you're expected to pay a hundred what did you say, hundred and sixty dollars? I think it, I think it was one forty five for a family of three. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's sixty so, or sixty yeah. or sixty. I mean what is yeah. why for one kid. You know why that is have that for one hundred and sixty five dollars. No, I'm sure yeah. people just right around and turn it on. Yeah, but my, like my kid, maybe he doesn't eat from school. Yeah, they just don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Or be noticed. Or maybe you send so you send food. Why there are a lot of people who miss that kind of like you're saying. What if you send food with your kid to school? 
-hmm. But then you're still in the, right. below that line. How, how do I get the letter, you know? So maybe revisit that. Um, or like the slide has a scholarship program, so maybe there's a, at least another step where it would probably need an outside funder maybe like in the city, but there would maybe be a scholarship thing for some activities. Well, right. MCA well, got their hands full right now. They, they, man, they, uh, they still trying to find a CEO to run the place. Because uh, I was wondering they, about that. I think No, the application process was ended last week. Yeah, was, I, I think it was last week. Yeah, I think that, um, and actually, I just got to meet that interim director uh, last week. But when you're talking about the youth center, youth area, it seems like they're rethinking, you know, their whole big, huge mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. and well, Martha was talking about that the other day. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, I've talked with comes. Martha and uh, Giannis, so I know they're both on the boards, or the YMCA board or whatever. Uh, can do we still, um, is it community rec? Does the city have say over the income, the whole pool cut off? You know, not that that's a little bit different. Yeah, I think the recommendation comes from rec, but the city council makes the final decision. Oh, do they? Okay. Yeah. So okay. I think it was just an easy cut off. There's, I mean, there was no thought, and that's that didn't sound right. But I mean, it was there wasn't any big formula. It was just easy. So I do think we could look at that. That's good. Maybe they could do something more like, you know, if you're using like South Country insurance or something like that, include that because that's a lot easier to prove than a letter. You know, because I know Community Ed does the discount for classes if you're on like South Country. You know, it's they get like fifteen dollars for four classes or something like that. But I mean that's something that would be a lot easier for a child or a family to come up with. And I would, I don't know, but I would guess more people qualify for South Country than free and reduced lunch or whatever program that they would use like that. Well, and maybe, you know, for some things like the Sheldon and, you know, I mean, also some of these things you wouldn't have to be so comfortable. Right. Makes it a whole lot easier if they're just on public assistance. We also got to think about participation, like this community re re education. Like, example, my daughter, my youngest, signed her up for a bunch of community ed programs just to get an email saying that didn't have enough people no. signed up. You know, and that's that's I've been noticing that's a constant thing. So participation is a is a, is a it's a must. Is that, is that also on the Park Naturalist program too, are you noticing, or is that better? Not really, we just did, um, just went and did this, um, they do a story time thing in the park, mm -hmm. and we went on a little nature hike and all that stuff, and there was quite a bit of kids there. Okay. Okay. I, I wanna say at least close to 10, 12 kids. And that is always free, yep. you know, so it's interesting what would happen if you open set this up yeah. a little bit more promoted? Yeah. Okay. Do we Please know go. is is like community and uh, community rec is that a revenue stream or is that simply a part of the budget of the district? My understanding is that they lose money. They 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 they, they try to cover their costs. They try yeah. to cover just their costs. Yeah. They okay. Cover, but they don't. Okay. Okay. Uh, it sounds like we, we need more promotion on a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, I haven't been in, in Red Wing that long, but some of this stuff I've never heard of. And I get the paper and go online and read stuff. And so I think if I'm one of them that's like that, there's a problem with a bunch of other people are like that. I agree because I didn't even know about the, um, the free uh, golf club. I didn't yes. know. Yeah. Me neither. I think so much of it comes electronically, and parents get overwhelmed, especially during the school year with everything that comes. When it was, when it was more like, I mean, it, 
when kids first started, like Friday night, you always got their stuff home in their school folder. And so you knew Friday night to spend that time really going through that folder and you got notices to sign up for hockey or basketball or whatever it was. And then they stopped and everything went electronically and it was harder to know about that stuff because you had to know where to look, you know, and when to look for it. So could it be something like what, uh, I can't remember, I think it was Sarah Hill maybe who said, uh, in addition to maybe more of the school folders, this idea of doing a, um, I feel like the United Way does a 2 one one for all the services that are available. Mm -hmm. But this would be for fun activities, free or, re free mm -hmm. or low cost, mm -hmm. and how to get, you know, and all the parameters. And then you just, it's a one <coughs> copy that you could pick up almost anywhere. Mm -hmm. okay. Like a Sheldon has that little, even if it wasn't necessarily just free and reduced, but if it had, like the Sheldon has that kids play free, that's what they call it. If it had a little button, a little bug next to the thing in the brochure that, okay, mm -hmm. these are activities that, Mm. that I can get some help with. But if it was, and if it's not like, I don't know, I always think it's nice if it's a little bit subtle, but it's there, like, like hey, look for these little blue dots on these things, and all those activities you can get help with, or whatever. Is the Associated Bank sign, is that digital sign still lit up, even though they're not there? It is, right? Yeah, it does it camp and everything? Oh, yeah. I think they uh, the one in that big building? Are you talking about downtown? Yeah. downtown? The temperature's still up there. Yeah. I'm wondering if you could ever, if they would ever, whoever has that, can change the right program. Oh, yes. Because it's yeah. on the corner there, it's mm -hmm. cheap, free, pro, you know, advertising of like, you know, free, free Sheldon night tonight or Friday night or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. the, um, Visitor and Convention Bureau and the Chamber are trying to get some kind of electronic sign downtown because we are going to have a lot more passengers coming in on the boats mm -hmm. and they want to be able to promote to them what's available yeah. and certainly could be used for internally too. Yeah. Um, I have one other thing, I don't know, uh, back when I moved here 25 years ago, they used to have Saturday night at the Y, mm -hmm. that was a family night and it was free for everybody to go in and race the gym and the city covered the cost of that, they paid the Y, I don't know, I'm gonna say $10,000, and then, and I think it was only in the winter, mm -hmm. but it opened it up every Friday, I think it was Friday night, for I, anybody to go. I was gonna ask about that, about our Y, because they had that actually, I think two weeks ago, for, I think for either July or June, in the cities, the Y was <coughs> taking the kids without pay on a certain day. So I said, we could do this in Red Wing on it, maybe on a day when the kids, instead of the kids being on here, you know, they can go and do something fun over there because, mm -hmm. yeah. It was going on on the Ys in the Twin Cities. It said Twin Cities. So I followed the ad and I'm like, I, we don't have this in Red Wing? You know, I, I, I got that and put it somewhere in the house, but they were, it was free. So that, that could be something really good. You know, this is on one of the things we talked about the scavenger hunt and architectural hunt. Um, I facilitated a group on Monday nights, and so we did this. I went downtown, and um, my son and I, we took about 25, 30 pictures of just little snippets of the architecture downtown, like a certain box in front of, you know, flower box or a bench or whatever. And then um, gave them to everybody, and they had to go around town, town, and <coughs> and it was so fun. And it was hard, and I forgot where one of the windows was, so that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just really fun. It was holding on, like, just being, you know, it, it was mental health based, so it was being you know, mindful. But it was really fun. And then afterwards, my co facilitator, we had some extra copies. She's like, Can I just have this for my kids? And it literally was, I mean, it was $12 in printing costs to do the color photos. I wanted to make color photos for them. But, you know, we spent about an hour and a half downtown, and it was just a really great time in just that four block area. For, and I know I had the idea uh, because um, I think one of the library one time did one of them, did a scavenger hunt. Well, the Heritage yeah. Preservation Committee does Was that? Okay. Yeah, they do it was so cool. Yeah. yeah. Preservation. <clears throat> and just taking a picture of like at the fountain at the River City Plot at the River Plot with the Wayne Group book that you know, you, know that you walk by all the time, but never stops really looking at it. Okay.
Good stuff. All right, I'm going to send you the notes because we have a lot. We still didn't get to one little piece, which was smaller neighborhood gatherings. Um, but it's 7:15, so I think we should, I, I really think we should just try to get through um, this section. If we can come back to that, we will. Okay. So this is really looking at getting involved with city government. Okay. So switch gears. Still fun. <laughs> <laughs> Still an event, <laughs> just a little bit different. Um, yeah, I will not. I will not. So, um, so this is really okay. Uh, let's go through a couple things about what does getting involved with city government mean to you? Because it can be everything from being on a board, commissioner, or council. It can mean coming to public comment. It could mean just knowing how to contact your council member. It could mean writing a letter. Yeah, I just, I we're gonna, I just like to get some of that and then find out what are some obstacles and barriers for getting involved with city government. Some of you are on boards and commissions right now, some of you are the advisory team and or other groups in Red Wing that may be more accessible and easier to be involved with. So let's talk about obstacles and barriers and then let's talk about how the city could potentially remove some of those barriers. But let's just take maybe three minutes and talk a little bit and talk a little bit about what are some ways that you, when you think about when someone says, hey, involvement with city government, what does that mean to you? Or what could it be? Politics? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, yep. for me it means politics. Um, fine line there, but uh, every time I think of the city, it's like, ooh, scary. And I, I would... It would be nice not to feel like that, you know. It... <clears throat> Thomas, we're calling you a bunch because you're leaving in 10 minutes. Yeah, okay. I'm okay. with Joe over here. I, I mean, getting involved with city government is obviously, to me, it sounds like politics. Okay. Um, getting in that way. Are there ways that you can think of, like, how would, how would you get involved? Let's say, you, let's say, because this is big. Okay. Well, Let's I, see if it's yeah. not so big and scary yeah. and all that. I, I would, I would uh, communicate to more people of color um, the importance of being involved in you know, the, the politics of the city and some of the, you know, learn the ins and outs of city government and where their voices are important. And you know, I would like to see the city reach out to everybody and maybe even a little more to people of color um, who right now I guess don't feel you know recognized in any way or um, the lack of being involved um, uh, hasn't you know makes it to where I guess they're not really, uh, I guess, you know, pushing as hard as they could to find out more. Uh, I mean, to be honest, it, it seems to me people of color, they, their government buildings, either jail, the welfare office, or, you know, somewhere like that, and I'm just going to be honest with you. you know, and again, it's, you know, they know where to go find help for resources if they can, but you know, being involved with, you know, the politics of the city, I think would be important. And I would encourage, you know, the city to reach out to more minorities. Do you, um, I'm just going to ask you because I know you. Yes, ma'am. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I don't have to. I'm going to spot here for a couple yeah. Because you said, I think mean, that's other. Um, do you have ideas, because we're going to get to that, but since you're going, I'm going to ask you right now. What would you say? Because you're out in the community a little bit, you're you know you're doing different things. What could what could city do better? I mean, are there some specific things that you think you know the city really should be at least thinking about this, or if it's really specific, like they should be doing this? Or well, I always side and my the one word I keep in my head is understanding. And so, you know, going back a little bit in the meeting tonight, you know, we can include you know have an African American heritage day. We can have inclusion in the River City days or whatever else, but 
you'll still have those people that will be like, oh, here they go, they're putting something in for the thugs. I'm just saying. Some people will think like that. And it would probably discourage those people with the, you know, the thoughts of that from, you know, engaging in the, the event. And maybe if some of the people, people of color that might have heard that and feel unwelcome still, they might not have all. So to understand each other, you know, that's where I always, you know, end up at that word. And again, the only way you can understand me is to understand, you know, that I do things a little different. I eat food a little different. My dialect is a little different. You know, how I praise God is different. But it's no different than what you do. It's, except, you know, I might stay at church two hours where you might stay at one, but, you know. And, and so those are the things, you know. So to, to, to have, you know, uh, you know, African American Heritage Day, you know, and just think about this and, and real, be realistic about it. In this community, right now, they'd say, oh, it's gonna be, they're gonna tear up our city, this, that, and the other. You know, and so it would, you know, it would discourage some people, white people, to not come to an event like that. You know, so we have to put the thought in to make sure everybody's comfortable. You know, this is a learning experience for us all. You know, I mean, because there's more than the MLKs and the Juneteenths and this and the other. You know, I don't want to just give me a token day for this. You know, I mean, the past is the past and the sins of our fathers, you know, are just that. But it doesn't mean we can't learn from the mistakes of the past. And so when I think about it, and it all boils down to that one word, understand. So do you think about... So sorry about that, sorry. No, no, excuse me. Um, do you think about events that, or just get-togethers, gatherings, don't have to be events, that you think would, um, you know, spur more understanding? Is it like shared meals, or is it, you know, is it like you said, because Thomas, you came up, you were actually the one that came up um, with the... <coughs> the day, you know, the events, yeah. the new events, yeah. and everybody right. put their dots on, they were right. like, yep, great idea. So do you have thoughts on, because with all your experience and everything too, are there certain types of things that you think spur more understanding of slowing down and maybe kind of not forcing, but encouraging people to have those conversations when they might not Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things, you know, we could do, and just for instance, say, at an African American heritage event. Um, just a thought that popped in my head once upon a time was, you know, you can have a, you know, a booth or a table and these people represent the, the 1900s, these next group represents the 1910s, but put meaningful information in there. But then also, I wouldn't mind having a pamphlet or literature, you know, basically, having people think about themselves, you know, the stereotypes against black people, the stereotypes black people have against white people, you know, those things, and they, they're not harmful, but it, you know, to understand, you know, everybody thinks that we're black, we like chicken and water, well, I'm sure you do too, you know, so don't put that, you know, on me, you know, because I really like chicken and water, you <laughs> but I'm just saying, those things like that, so, like I said, not just to have an event, listen to my music, because you can do that on the radio. You know, you can watch uh, ABC for, you know, a Black History Day event. I need you to understand more. And not necessarily to teach you, but I need to know why are you so uncomfortable with me being around you? You know, and does the one, you know, the stuff they show on the news, does that really give you a concept or idea of what the black race is as a whole? You know, so I'm sorry I get along with it, but those are some of the things I think and I research and I listen to and look up. But so discussions too. Discussion, yeah. So basically, yeah. I'm yeah. asking you questions. You're asking me questions. Yeah. yeah. If if we if we came down to it, but if you don't, can I give you something? You know, you can take home. You know, and just you know think about it. You know, because maybe nobody's ever thought about that. What is it about black people that you know makes me uncomfortable? You know, or, you know, 
Just those things. And, you know, same thing for, for me as a black man. You know, I have to ask myself, what is it about white people that makes me uncomfortable? What makes me angry with them? Same thing, what makes you angry with black people? What makes you uncomfortable around them? You know, racism is, you know, when we look at it from, the, from my side of fence, basically, a lot of people think racism is a, a, a white man in a Ku Klux Klan role, and it's not just that. There's racism in uh, the financial side of things, the housing side of things, and a lot of us aren't aware of those small things that are, you know, racially biased. And so, like I said, I could go on and on, but you better tell me to get out of here. I got three minutes. You guys ready for some more? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I, I just, you know, and oh, I'm sorry, let me go back to the community center. And I think that's a heck of an idea. But what if you got kids in there, and usually kids of, of a feather flock together? So if you got one kid white, one kid black, and one kid, the white kid says the N word to the black kid, and the black kid says the you know uh, C word to the to the white kid, where did they learn anything about you know coming together? And this is for us all, and they really haven't learned anything because there needs to be some understanding in there. Why do, why is this word here? Why do we call each other these words? Well, um, a lot of people don't know the word cracker or the word hunky. The word hunky came from uh, New York drug, uh, white people would come down and blow a horn and the drug dealer would go downstairs. And so that's where the word hunky came from. Cracker came from a white man snapping his whip on the back of a black person, you know, or sucker, that word. They don't even know that a baby they, that's what a black mother would call her children back in the, in the slavery era where, you know, that's what, ma you know, master don't take my sucker, you know, because that's what they called their children. And so things like this is what I would love for people to know. And maybe it'll make them think twice about using some of the words that we do use. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's more than just Skin deep. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, with that, you guys take care. I do have a little bit of a little sore arm here. Okay. Yeah. Well, we you, when you get when you get older, you'll understand. <laughs> and it brings. Right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. 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 So, a little bit more. What? Uh, because if we're going to talk about obstacles for getting involved in the city government.
even though when you said what does it mean for you, but you know, in general, I'm, I'm with you, but I moved back to town, I had no idea. Boards, commissions, none mm -hmm. of that. I didn't know any of that. You know, just raised my kids and uh, nothing about that. Didn't know who my city council member was, didn't know any of that. Mm -hmm. um, so you're saying really for a lot of people, it's really, you know, it's sort of a blank. What they don't have. You don't have the right connections, yeah. you don't have the right ed education or notification or, I don't know, that's just my thoughts on it. I had no idea up until recently when I started getting more involved that there are so many different avenues and ways to connect as a, you know, citizen. <laughs> I think a, a, a huge ask for me is, is time. Mm -hmm. It's so much time to be involved, and you're so stressed then anyway. Time is, is my most precious commodity. So here's a question that's come up recently, and we're wondering what you guys think. Um, there are kind of two trains of thought on, let's say, a board commission. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say the Human Rights Commission. Mm -hmm. um, those meetings could be from six to eight. Kind of like these are, you know, we try to start really right in time and we end on time. And I've always said we're going to do that. Um, but for the most part, we have, except one time during technical difficulties. Um, we started to end in 20 minutes late. But um, whereas board commissions, sometimes it kind of depends. It depends on the work, people. They go long, they go short. Some of them are three hours. You kind of never know when they're going to end. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, and everyone probably has a different opinion on this, but if you're looking at child care, you're looking at other kinds of things. Are there some quick feedback on that as far as for board and commission meetings? Would it be helpful? Would it be more? Some people think, hey, we want to be really accessible. So we want everybody to be able to talk about anything they want. And if it goes four hours or three hours, that's being more accessible to people's opinions. The other side of the coin, maybe there's something in the middle, is we're going to make this an hour and a half, or an hour, or two hours, or whatever it is set, so that our people know when they need to get transportation, when, if we're going to provide child care, or they need to get child care. You know, people have to get up for jobs, that kind of stuff. So, do you have thoughts on, do you like set times like we have here? Do you, you know, when we're talking about getting people this time, this lack of time, maybe everybody has a different opinion on it, but. I like accommodation. I like I like the time, and I'm on another committee, and I just talked to that facilitator of putting a time agenda on it so that it kind of keeps people on track, mm -hmm. but then being very, um, very, intentional on what's on the agenda so that there's the time in those blocks to have the deeper discussions, like not trying to cram so much on an agenda. Whether that is you meet twice a month or every three weeks or whatever it is um, to get the work done, but the time is focused because it is really hard for people to just I, I, I'm going to speak for myself. It would be really hard to have an open-ended meeting that might be four hours. That would be very difficult for, for me. So, um, you know, um, I, I like having the time, but I like this format, but then not trying to put too much in that you can't have those more intimate discussions. I think it varies from commission and committees too on what, um, like I had to go to a, uh, the, uh, was it the Her Heritage Commission, I forget it was, for, for yeah, yeah. something on my house. And then say if there was five other people, they only meet once a month, you know, they got to hear everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's to be tough for them to say, okay, our meetings are from six to eight or whatever time you want to put at it. You know, and all of a sudden in the summer, I'm sure you're going to get a lot more um, people coming in versus in the winter. So. Okay. What about child care people who need child care? Does it help or not help when you know a specific time? Help. It helps. It helps. Yep. So that. Because okay. it, it, I it determine if my daughter has to come with me or not. You know. Okay. So, 
Um, what are some of the other barriers? We talked about lack of information, lack of feeling like maybe you're somebody who could do it. Time is a big one. Um, think about childcare. Uh, we have stipends. We happen to have stipends for this group. Um, I'm wondering what you think about that. I mean, money. People have to, for whatever reason, you know. It's not enough. I'm just going to keep out. I don't know. I'll go. Um, oh, sorry. But I'm just kind of curious because I don't know, man. I think we should get more. I mean, we're expected to do this and that for $75. That's barely gas money. And well, then. And our boards and commissions are volunteers. You're not getting anything. Oh, I know that. Trust me. I know all that. I know that. <laughs> I know. That's why I feel. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like if we're going to get a stipend, and uh, since what's her name ain't even involved here no more, like that was forty some thousand dollars we were giving this lady. Oh, yeah. She didn't. We didn't. Well, I don't. Stick I, with you it, know. But, but, yeah, so it wasn't that much. Why can't yeah. some of that code go to us or some type of? Mm -hmm. I don't. Yep. So do so. You are liking the idea of stipends. <laughs> I love it. Okay. You want an extra dollar to make this. I think looking at access and inclusion and who has access to a Monday through Friday 9 to 5 job and who is working shift work and overnight hours and who has access to childcare and family support and who doesn't and you're looking at traditionally oppressed populations that don't have access to those things. And so it just is piling on. And I feel like when you get to these conversations, that that's when you start pulling the string. <laughs> and there's just so much to unpack that you want this group to become more involved because you want their opinion, you want them at the table. But then you have the meeting from 6 to 8 p.m. and they went to work at 4. Um, or they worked all night and they're sleeping. Um, or you want them there and they paid all their money for lunch, school lunches, so they don't have anything extra for childcare. So just thinking about if you want everyone represented at the table, then looking at like equity-wise who needs what and providing, not giving, how are we going to get them at that table to make it open? Well, I know, I mean, one of the trends that is that, you know, when you want to bring everyone to the table, you might need to move the table to where they're at. Yeah. You know, so what what are some suggestions and is there anything to make it more accessible? Would you have I mean do you know would you, would you feel comfortable like okay Sam, so we've got child care here. Would you if you're filling out a, a border commission thing and it said please mark here if you need or for anyway, transportation, check child care, check um, if there's a statement available you know, the statement. Um, I, I think most people are going to take that. Um, trying to think of anything else. An old for work. Child care transfer. An old for work. What'd you say? An old for excuse for work. Oh, yeah. right, right. Exactly. Yeah, that is the thing. We asked this group about, like, when, when, when could people do it this time? In general, was the best for everybody, but a different group of people might have said something different, mm -hmm. you know? I for sure thought people would say Saturday mornings. I don't know what I was thinking, but nobody. Oh, don't no think way. anybody. <laughs> They're like, no, absolutely not. Sleeping time. Let me see if there was anything, there anything else on here that, um, oh, okay, here's the question then. Let's say that you actually do sign up for something, mm -hmm. and for some of you who are on you know, specific boards or commissions, you might have thought about this. And you think about anything like a job, okay, you're retaining. How do you retain people? How do you keep them there? Or how do you feel, how do you make them feel more welcome and knowing the ropes when they get there? It's just like a job, you know, and sometimes people will have mentors. So is mentoring something that would help you if you came onto a board or commission or a council? Like you are a new council member and you're like, I, you know, what do I do? Would it help to have a mentor paired with you for maybe the first six months, maybe it's longer, where they're kind of like, this is your person, you ask questions, you 
you know, whatever it is. Does mentoring sound like something that you think would help, or? I was thinking kind of the opposite. Um, uh, the, the, the typical board of commission, are you on there until you say you don't want to be on there anymore? Three, three years, is, and then okay. you can sign up for one more term. So mm -hmm. three years, okay. you can re-up for another three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because so. I'm wondering how you get somebody new in there, or mm -hmm. get it more yeah. diverse, if you, right. if you will. Mm -hmm. um, not on the mentoring part, but you know, we do have a few members you feel aren't able to be a part of this anymore. Are we going to... Are you gonna ask them why? Kind of like what? Yeah. Why are you doing? We can try and find out. Well, I think I was just saying that um, you know, like Juan. I'm trying to reach out to Juan because he hasn't been here for a long time. So, and he was telling me before that he just he has a lot, you know. So I mean, life does get in the way, and that that is, and any board commission, anything like that. So there are there will always be people who, even though you're on a three year term, like you asked Steve, there will be people. <coughs> Join that much. So, so that's we something have... I actually was going to ask you about too is because I have noticed that we've been having a few people ask if, if yep. it was going to become permanent, are we going to utilize our substitute? Yes. Yep. Okay. So after this meeting, I wanted to see who is here because then we have a number of absences by people. So then it's, I mean, I have reached out, but now it's time to really say, mm -hmm. okay, I, you know, the team is meeting. This group has really been coming every single time, the, the group here. Um, so to ask people if, you know, they're on or off. So, then we have, I think there are three people who are, um, what do you call like substitutes. And then um, if we miss four, because that's not here, Yadira, Juan, and Alexis, um, I, I don't know, I don't know about those four, but let's say it was four, then we would go and we would, because the group was set up as 12, so. But anyway, um, I'm just wondering if that if that idea, like if you, okay, so Corey, you really have, you, let's see, okay, not on a board of commission, you come into the, I don't know, H, the Heritage Preservation Commission or something, would you want someone to be paired with you, or is that odd, or do you think it's a very individual thing? I think it could be a benefit. At least having a, yeah, like here's a phone number of a person, but, you know, yeah. I don't know, it's, because it is, it's, it is scary and it's confusing. Like, I don't know, am I supposed to, you know? Um, and having somebody says, you know, this is something that I went through when I did it, or these are people that are, you know, you can ask. Okay. I mean, just finding okay. where the resources are. Uh -huh. I don't know, I right. So that's the idea a little bit. Uh, maybe having a few people who, like, if you have questions on Robert's rules, you know, Corey's the expert. If you have questions on, you know, policies and procedures, you know, Troy, because Especially on those commissions, when you're getting into voting, I would hate mm -hmm. to have somebody think, well, you're kind of influencing. Yeah. I didn't find it important because I was a mentor. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But if you had three or four people doing different roles of the mentorship, if they had questions, they wouldn't feel like they were always going to the same person. And then at least for the public perception, you wouldn't have that feeling of, mm -hmm. well, Corey's being mentored by Liz, so Liz, you know, Liz might be influencing yeah. Corey on the side to vote a certain or it could be that your staff liaisons and other staff are maybe more that. I mean, I guess I didn't have thought about that. Like, honestly. you don't have enough to do. <laughs> well, I just thought, you know, I never thought about that, so that is a good, I, I guess we're, but, but we're trying to think of, you know, like, what are, what are just some of the main obstacles, because we really do want to get more people involved, but life is difficult. So what would be, so then the other thing is reaching out, and Thomas said, you know, Give to people. Mm -hmm. Do or, people here have ideas on how or to? Maybe, is that know. individuals who people trust to go out and say, "Hey, you can do this"? Is there a way that city government can do that, or do we need to rely on people to say, "You know, I know Corey, I know Liz, I know Michael, I know Sarah, Joel, you know"? And but then again, we're kind of relying on people who aren't in government to sort of spread the yeah. word. But maybe that is the way that we do on our boards and commissions. We we ask them more because we don't do that a lot. Mm -hmm. But I think I think it's a, it's not a bad idea to have a, a to go to person because it can be scary. Mm -hmm. I mean, gosh, when 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 I maybe some of you remember when I got on that board, I was shaking. Oh my God, don't know what you're talking about. I don't know the the, the 
Red Wing government or the American, you know, you just know a little bit of that. So when you start, you're just staring. And at the same time, you don't know when to speak. You don't know if you should speak at all, you know. It could be confusing, but when you have somebody you can say, well, when we reach there, what am I supposed to, you know. I think for the first, when you're just getting into, we don't want anybody to put your ideas because you're there to kind of think. But I think to be able to have a person to ask or a department where you can say, um, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I think a lot of people would be doing it. As I said, scary is there because you don't know what you're getting into. It's not common knowledge to be on a city board or, or, or government board. You know, That's why we're trying to get those kids from school, right, to get them in. The city is supposed to be, well, to me it looks like, oh my God, it's big, and all of a sudden you throw me in there. I'm freezing because I don't know what I'm doing. So awareness, you know, if, we, if people can be more aware of what they are expected to do, and then if they don't feel like they know what's going on, they can go and ask somebody. I always kind of ask you, like, Hell, yeah, you know, which is good. Yeah, because I started during COVID too. Almost, remember yeah. everybody came once, and then we all went. Really yeah, and I just feel like I'm staring. Yeah, so <laughs> maybe like, you don't even know how to be here. Apologize to everybody that joined. Well, during COVID, because uh, you know, I know like the youth commission had their own meeting today, and I mean, I learned so much about city stuff during that onboarding session that I didn't know. Yeah. But maybe have a follow-up one, one or two meetings into new people because at that point then they're like well now I'm like you've actually been in some meetings you know so if you've got the mechanics of the meeting on the onboarding mm -hmm. but now that you've had a couple meetings under your belt you do have questions like do I raise my hand when I want to yeah. you know like those kind of things yeah, yeah. yeah. to have a follow-up session of that okay. well, I think if you're looking at getting people into it um, just advertising, you know, whether it's in the newspaper, online, or whatever, I think you would have a lot more success if I'm talking to somebody or, or one of us goes talk to somebody about whether it's this board or any other board or something like that, somebody that they know can tell them, okay, this is what they do, and I think you do a good job on it, you're passionate about this, or whatever. Yeah. I think we really want to do it. I think it's going to be a lot more beneficial if somebody so talks to somebody. Personally. So being ambassadors. Like in, yeah, like being ambassadors. ambassadors. In an informal way. So yeah. like somebody going, can you, yeah. you can join yeah. the city government? <laughs> okay. I think going back to um, Michelle, when you first had these up and they were blank and you said how to get involved with the city government, you had a long list of things that weren't so formal. So there is boards and commissions, there is a city council, but there is also the public opinion, there's the or public comment, there's writing a letter to the editor, there's all these other pieces of things that you can do. I was thinking of voting, like that's the very basic way that you can get involved in the government is your right to vote. and. Um, so I think that looking at it from all of those levels, I was also thinking of making the people on the boards, commissions, and city council and the mayor more accessible to the public of who who is my person, who is my city council person that represents where I live, where do I go to meet the mayor, and how do I get to know this person and what they believe in and what they're working on for the city. Um, and going back to the events, could there be a city, and maybe there is already, a city booth at the Stroll and at River City Days where there are people there and you can go and shake their hands, excellent, and meet them. Um, the um, state representatives got the um, one of the rooms at um, Caribou a couple years ago and had people come and just chat with them and drink coffee. Could they do that at Mandy's or at Caribou once a month where it's just go and meet your person? Um, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The coffee will come, to go back to that um, and 
you know, maybe that would help too. Um, okay, so what we're going to do in the last 10 minutes is sort of summarize and then really go through the next steps. So like, okay, we've talked about all this stuff, now what happens? Um, the other thing that I just wanted to mention real quick is Sam, you mentioned it about the um, neighborhood grant program. Uh, Michael, you've asked in the past about how do you do how do you do neighborhood gathering? You know, you just want to like get together with people. Mm -hmm. And is the city or not some kind of barrier to that? You know, what are the hoops you have to jump through? What are the rules you have to do? And could we strengthen neighborhoods by encouraging more just people gathering with their neighbors, that kind of <coughs> understanding and having those conversations. So there is a process right now. Again, every city council member has a six hundred and fifty dollar budget. I mean, we don't do a great job of really promoting that anyway, do we? Hey, I'm trying to think of, you know, we, we don't really have it out there. So you might think of that as like a mini, mini, mini grant program, but I mean, it would probably could definitely grow. And this is something, if you have an idea, you just contact your council member and ask, hey, I want to do X, Y, Z. Do you have 300 bucks from your art fund? Each one has $650. Would you be willing to give that to me so that I could do this in our neighborhood? Um, but the idea of that grant program, Sam, that you guys were kind of tossing around, that would be something that maybe would grow. So it could be the city fills out grants in some way. We get, let's say that we get $20,000 to really give away to different neighborhoods. That would need, I, I would think, a group to really sit down and figure out who, you know, those parameters that you were talking about. How do we make sure that that's accessible to well, all the neighborhoods? How often, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because um, I, I would say until those those questions are answered, I'm totally against that because mm -hmm. I don't want one neighborhood to be flourishing in all the aspects. And then, Definitely. you know, a mile down the road, two miles down the road, we've got mm -hmm. a neighborhood falling apart. So I guess I yep. I don't make that recommendation unless those answers can be or those questions can be answered. I agree with Sam. I am really worried that more. Um, flourishing neighborhoods would know how to write grants they would know what to ask for and maybe neighborhoods that need more help aren't working together as mm -hmm. a team more and yeah I would hope any grant would be very simplistic and more just kind of a fill in the blank and then really writing a grant like what were you doing <laughs> like yeah, yeah. I, I thought of that too when you, you, you brought that up. That oh, you, you want to do this, this, you know, that yeah. are just a short <laughs> paragraph <laughs> thing. That wait for a city to come out. Yeah, it's not like you don't have to run out of government. Anytime, anything more than that. Okay, okay. So I will. We'll make sure that that gets put in there. That all of that would need to be covered. Um, the next steps for that group of recommendations, okay, that we all looked at at the beginning, does this group feel like that is something that you want to go before the council? Or do you want to look at this some more, make changes, and then approve something on August 11th? Yeah. I'm just pushing a little because the council, you know, I, I just wanted to know what you all think. Should we? Uh, yep. I don't know. Should we buy time and go through it again and just make sure we are ready for the council, or, or, or is everybody else like ready? We have a lot of questions from where it stands now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So can everybody then write down your questions in the next week? Okay. No, I don't have questions. I feel like the council will have questions that we have a lot of unanswered. Yeah. I don't have any personal questions, but I feel like the council for sure will. So I mean, maybe if you don't go into that. Yeah, maybe Kate can, can touch base on, I'm going to pick something like um, Lift the Leaders program. Okay. Do you feel like the council wants to hear all the details on that? Or do you feel like, yeah, when you look at this, Kate, tell us a little bit about how you feel about these recommendations in terms of what they might be thinking. Yeah, so what, when we're talking about the budgets for next year, so in my mind, you've done a nice job of identifying a strategic plan that it ties to. So when I go to the council in August, I'm gonna say, here's our budget that takes care of kind of our normal services. And if, you know, ask them, do you want more services? Do you want less services? Tell me. 
But then what we also do is say, in the strategic plan, here are the 10 things that I've heard you say we need to start working on. And if it's something like a program that's coming from here, we'll just say, directly related to strategic plan number 58 is this concept. And what we'd like to do is put in X amount of dollars so that we can develop the program. It doesn't have to be that the program is developed. It just has to be that we have an idea that we think is really worth working on next year, and we need some money to be able to make it come alive. So I think what we need is just a, an idea, and um, if you can give me some guidance on how much you're talking about, then I can build that into the budget. And then on August 30th, when they talk, they usually spend a lot of time on these because these are the things that they want to make come alive. These are the things that they felt are really building community. So I don't think you have to have details, but I think you just have to have a good idea and an idea of how much money. Okay. I do think this document is extremely well put together, but it's a little bit overwhelming. And so if we could choose like our top five or top six that were at the beginning and then other suggestions as like you do have another suggestions in the back, but like another other suggestions. So we're putting forth in the front. Like these are the ones that really we like. These are other ideas that we also support and like and would be fantastic, but like prioritizing a little bit. So you mean we, we should do because we have categories, like three categories, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you mean we'll just go four on one and four on two, or, or one on one, and, and how you know, are we going to... categories are kind of like, they're by time period. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of, I just sort of picked by time period, mm -hmm. you know? So it doesn't have to be that. You could just pick your top, um, and I guess it could be by time, but it wouldn't have to be. Is it too much? I'm just asking. Well, you're talking just the <laughs> yellow highlight. Yeah, it's, it's, you think this right? is overwhelming? I mean, if we give you this, you'll be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. No, in fact, I think a lot of them have already read this, so I don't think this is too much. Yeah. Um, the, if the question is, can we do all these things in here, then I think no, it's no, probably no. too much. But this document, no. Uh, especially because they've had a lot of time. They've already seen it. Yeah, this was in there, I think. Um, well, I put it online, and then we let them know this is, you know, they, they, they read the summary notes from the advisory team. Mm -hmm. So these were the summary notes. It says at the top, these will be reviewed by the team, you know, and there may be edits or updates. So we wanted, every, we wanted people who read it to know this wasn't the final. Maybe, um, if Sarah, would it get to that in terms of if we put all the highlighted ones first? Would that sort of maybe be... Get at what you're talking about, because really, well, what I'm hearing is that it's fi like for the city council, this is fine. So if that okay. if that's the case, then no changes would need to be. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Michelle, uh -huh. are we going to allow time for these guys to speak? Sure, we can have a couple minutes. Yep, just one sec. Uh, so we all three pages. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> or just the highlighted ones? No, I think all three okay. pages. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would attach it as a resource, but when I do my memo, I'm going to pull out the ones that you've kind of said are your top priorities, the highlighted ones, mm -hmm. and, okay. and really talk about those in more detail. Got it. And then they would have all this as kind of background. Um, so, uh, Kay, do you feel like this is a document that you, okay, so that you'll use to kind of put right into that budget memo, right? Do you feel like it's important for someone to come and present this? Yes or no? And then is there anybody who would want to? If you feel like it's really important that you do it, you could. If nobody wants to, this isn't a group that says you've got to get up in front of council and if that's really uncomfortable. We're not, I'm not going to, you know, I don't think we want to make anybody super uncomfortable. I'll um, do it. You do it? Yeah. But when are we going to present it? Not it, could be, it could be the next one, which is July 26th, or it could be August 9th. Either yeah, like, uh, August 9th a little bit better. Okay. Sounds good. That'll be right there in no. the end. No. It's yeah, like yeah August 9th. Like, I think Mondays. October, sorry. August 9th would be good. Okay. Everybody good with that? Okay. And if you go home and you want to stand next to Michael and give us what you can do that, you know. Hey, if you remind me, I'll come and support <laughs> Michael. <laughs>
I know you can handle it. I guess I just have a question. So we get this recommendation for for micro. Um, then what? They say yeah, no, or they're going to ask us to provide more input afterwards. Because I still feel like there's a lot of unanswered. There are a lot of unanswered questions. Like if yeah. you look at the effectiveness or the effectiveness, averaging the desired results, effort, time required, cost, ability, um, that are bulleted here, we don't have the answers to all of those. No. For each one of these highlighted points. Right. This was saying that, hey, we had on a big sheet those things that said, hey, when you come up and you kind of decide what things are most important, just take those into consideration. Are these things affected? But those don't, don't, those don't have to be answered. I don't think so at this point. Well, I mean, in detail, I mean, uh, they'll be worked on again after it's recommended. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the way I see it is, a lot of times when we bring projects to the council, we bring pieces. So we introduce the idea and ask them, do you have questions? And they'll say, yeah, we have some questions, and gathers more information for us. So they may come up with something that nobody's thought of, or maybe something you've already talked about. But usually then they'll say, you know, green light, keep working on this, work, we support this. So then the next time we come, it'll be the budget workshop, and they'll say, oh, we've heard about this, we support this, and you're looking for $5,000 for this, we will keep that in the budget. And then the idea is before the money can be spent, there has to be more detail in the program. But it's like bringing them steps so that they can continue to understand it. Okay. And then when it comes in the final program, it will have to have more details, but it doesn't have to in August. Okay. Because they might say no right away, and then it's like, well, it doesn't make sense to spend a lot of time on it if it's just that. Right. Yeah. yeah. And some things the city might have more like control right. over. The teen center, they could definitely be a support and a, a big partner at the table, uh -huh. but then it would need other partners. But knowing that this is a super high priority, and the school sees that, and the Y sees that, and hope, you know, other people are looking at these recommendations. So having that on there, you know, may have happened in two weeks, but I think having the council say, yeah, we support this. And if the council supports it, other people will try to listen to. Does that make sense? I know it's clear as mud, but okay, is there anything in here before we end that you feel, um, because what, what, what I will do also is kind of with this, I will put together some notes, but quickly, so that everybody can see kind of these two topics that we covered, how, to, how the topics about getting more involved with government and the specifics on defense. Because that, that does have some budget parameters. And I can send that out. And we'll make sure, we'll talk Michael before we present if you want. And if Kay has any questions after this, we'll kind of communicate by email. But we'll make sure that everybody feels good about it. And if you go home tonight and you're like, I have some, you know, email me. Like, let me know if there's something on here that you don't feel comfortable with or something like that. Okay? And then we have a couple of, is there anything else before we have a couple, we'll give a couple minutes to the chairs and people from the public. Anything else? Okay. Chairs, Um, Just with regard to um, encouraging um, engagement in, in city government and, 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 and especially with regard to this group specifically, um, it's really hard to know what's going on, you know, especially when it's not, I mean, if, you, if you're not here, you don't know what's going on until later. Yeah. And um, I just, I don't feel like I know what's going on, really, you know what I mean? I, I wish I knew, I wish, um, I wish I had more information, more contact, I guess, um, personal contact. Um, I, maybe I'm not saying that right, um, but it just feels like this is a separate entity and I don't know what's going on. It feels like they're, I don't know, why, why isn't it that this is not... Do um, you want it taped, is that what you're saying? Like, yeah. when, when it was virtual, did yeah, you feel you more like you did? it virtual now because of COVID, it's over. Well, and because we love being in person too, so that's, but um, there are, I mean, obviously the council is taped, 
Um, our boards and commission, the regular meetings are taped, the workshops are audio taped. So this is this has been working more like a community group, like workshop, you know, sometimes we're up or down, or so I mean we could we could consider taping it if you want, but sometimes right, we're not in a you can't do a like you can't do a um, WebEx or Oh, Zoom to or, join in, you're saying? Yeah, like if people can't make to it. To listen instead of like putting in, because even with like when you go to the audio from the last meeting, right? If, you, if you don't have a certain, because um, yeah. I can't do it on Safari, you can't do it on, uh, I had to download a whole other server to play the audio. Yeah, and so you I probably couldn't even, couldn't even hear it. Very I couldn't well. use Chrome or Safari. And then everybody's up walking around and talk, you know what I mean, small groups. So that is the other thing to know is that if we videotape it, sometimes we're all in a group like this, and then half the time we're gonna be up and around and these three are gonna be meeting and these three are gonna be meeting. And then, you know, we're gonna be in small groups, we're gonna be up doing stuff. So um, I guess we can think about, well, I don't wanna say anything's impossible. <laughs> You can put it up here, and then you're going to see like some pops of heads, and you're not going to be able to see some people over there. But I mean, we could we could try it. I think we've taped some stuff at the foot room a long time ago. We have to get an AV tech and that kind of stuff. Um, so you're saying for people who can't come, like you did tonight, yeah, you want to be able to watch or listen in when it's live, yeah. Well, we have to get into it. Could the thing I don't want to take a lot of time with. For, like, when we know we're going to have sit-down meetings versus more of a hands-on. I mean, we can, set up a, we can set up a camera right there and just, it won't be great, but, I mean, people could. Oh, but to watch it live, we have to do it in the council chambers. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> it's so formal in the council chambers. Well, um, it's just, the room is used so much, it's hard to get time in there because, mm -hmm. yes, and then you're in, we have childcare here. Right. Yeah. Well, you said for Well, the it's going to be at the so Y from now on, so you could, even if it was there, or the yeah. foot room, which the foot room is not opening until the end of the summer, but we can, okay, so I won't keep anybody, but, so we, okay, let's do, uh, we will do some thinking on that internally. I, about I wanted to, to hit that. off the, the mm -hmm. lift up leaders and the mm -hmm. flight plan program, mm -hmm. the flight pass program, because I see that it's it's in here, but if you look at the city, you guys already have an entity that does it. We're actually in their building, the Red Wing at night. It's right there, learn to earn. Yep. If you look at their program, you guys already promote all of the stuff, the lift up leaders, the, the flight plans, past program. I've already emailed Karsten. Some of the things that uh, have not been discussed is like, especially with the youth, that it's not promoted at Tower View. Why isn't it promoted at Tower View? because a lot of those kids are honestly already working and they're taking care of their families. Yep, yep. Uh, that's and I, that's one thing that I, I even asked Karsten about as well, is how much does the city really promote to Tower View, even with their summer program? He couldn't give me that answer, because he honestly wasn't sure if it's the summer youth program was even promoted at Tower View, uh, but he does know that it's, it's promoted at the high school. And I feel like, when it comes to, to Tower View, and then especially with the way that the city sees it, is that it's an it's a, a alternative learning center, when really it's not. It's really kids that go there, and a lot of them work, they have jobs, they take care of their families, or they have families themselves. Yeah. So it's that stigma of, of putting a bad light on it, because honestly, I, I, there's probably tons of kids right now that are sitting there, because you've got 19 to 20 year olds in there too. So that puts them above, and we already have Red Wing Ignite. Why not use it to its advantage? And it, I've been over their program with uh, Ken Logan and, and sitting here talking about it, and why doesn't the city use it? It's been here since, what, 2013, 2012? Yeah, so I mean, we can provide some data on that, because you're mm -hmm. right, we do send kids through Learn to Earn, and then yep. Also, flight paths, and I think we can talk with the school. They do the majority of the promotional flight yeah. paths, but can the city help do that with them? So we could. Well, no, do and I agree. And, and it's like my thing of it is, is like this stuff is already here in Red Wing. It's just not being utilized. Mm -hmm. And I look at Red Wing Ignite stuff, and they do so much stuff, but I don't see anybody 
participating in it. And they got they do a lot of stuff for the youth. Yep. And where where is the, I don't see the city promote any of that. But yet we get or they're only paying a dollar a year to use this. And how much does the community really use this? Yeah. How much does the city utilize for everybody getting better? Well, we I mean, I, I think we do, but we could probably do more in case we're in meetings and we're working on some things together. So. Well, I'm just I saying, instead of adding other stuff, why not use the stuff that's already here, oh, that's right. already been built in for? Yeah. Uh, I've already looked at the Northfield program. There's nothing really different than Red Wing at Night does than what Northfield is doing. It's just got oh, a different I name. I see what you're saying. I, I was, I was yeah, I'm talking about the, the lift-up leaders, okay, the lift yeah. up leaders and yes. the, the flight plan. Okay. Like, everything that uh, is in both of those programs, you go on Red Wing at Night's website, and they already do that stuff. It's just not being utilized. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's point. all I'm saying. Yep. Of like, we already have an entity that already does lift up leaders, right. and, and and does a flight plan. We just don't utilize it. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Okay, got it. Got it. Yep. Good point. So it's like all you need to do is just put it in your budget. And Red Wing Ignite already has, there's Stacy, there's other people that are contact points that sit there and, and let them do it, just give them the money. So you gotta do is plan it in the budget. It's not that hard. Okay, good, good point. Okay, are we good then? Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, thanks for coming. Thanks to you guys for coming from the public. Thanks to all of you for coming. Thanks for seeing the show and it's over. And we will move ahead. Okay? Make some things happen.